If you haven't had a television for the last 30 years, you won't know any of my next guests, but I've got to apologise <laughs> for all those people who uh, like saving trees, because I've printed out some of the work that they've done. Between the three of them, there's a body of work here which, I don't know, any other 20 people would be proud to have accumulated over a lifetime. And joining us now, I'm very excited about this, to, directly to my right, I have Paula Duncan, Judy Nunn and Cornelia Francis. Good morning, ladies. Thank you so and much for coming on Wake Up WA. Welcome to Perth. Welcome back to Perth, of course, yes, Judy. my old hometown, of course. West yeah. Aussie. Yep. Yeah. So, now yeah, you guys have had a busy couple of days and obviously arriving into Perth uh, late yesterday afternoon and off to the casino last night. But, uh, <laughs> Paula, can you briefly explain for our viewers, what are you doing in WA? Well, I'm the ambassador of the Royal Hospital for Women, which is the only hospital in New South Wales, but the largest in Australia. And it basically services not just New South Wales, but rural Australia, all over Australia, but also the whole South Pacific. And in particular, at the moment, we're here to raise funds for our uh, breast care centre, which is at the Royal Hospital for Women, in which Judy is actually the ambassador for. So look, I've, I know we've got all these excited people out there going, I, I know these people. Now, I'll, I have to call you Ailsa. Because <laughs> I prefer Judy. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. No. <laughs> now, Judy, I'm not here, as Judy. well as your acting credits, of course, you're also uh, four years running Australian Author of the Year and uh, a, a, a vast body of writing work coming well, out now as well. the funny thing is, though, Jason, uh, yeah, uh, I have a new book coming out in November, which is called Flood Tide, and it is set in Western Australia, specifically Perth, my old hometown, and, uh, and more to the north. I don't actually go down to the Margaret River, where we're heading for shortly. Uh, but in the Pilbara area, which is very much in the news these days. So, yeah, my head is very, very Western Australian at the moment. I was going to say, with, with Cal, and there's a, there's a, few, a, a, a yep. bit, bit of your writing reflects on your childhood in WA, so that's uh, great mm. for Western Australians. And obviously the rest, of, uh, the rest of Australia and the rest of the world loves hearing about WA. Yes, fantastic yes. Success. and of course my books at the moment are going really well in Germany. And when Territory was published, uh, as the title denotes, based in Northern Territory, uh, my little, they had this beautiful map of Australia. I feel quite an ambassador for Australia, actually. And right up near Darwin, it had Bulalala, which was my fictional name for my cattle station. So all I could see is all these German tourists getting off the, the, the uh, in Darwin, going, take me to Bulalala, Boris, Bulalala. So, yeah. And the poor tour guys having a hard time finding it. Yes, exactly. So, Judy, look, Paul's the ambassador for the, the Royal Hospital for Women, and you're the ambassador for, for, the, the, for the Breast Centre. The breast centre. Uh, which is, yes. And what we're particularly after with this tour, we're going to get it too. It's, uh, it's uh, called a performer and it's a mammography machine. Because as we know, with the, I mean, the, the, the frightening statistics of breast cancer in this country, and of course the, most, uh, uh, the, the, the best method uh, with breast cancer is of course early detection. So the performer is a mammography machine of the highest resolution, uh, you know, x-ray machine, which will detect abnormalities in the breast very early on and uh, nip it in the butt, so to speak. And how does it reflect for the patient's point of view? I mean, obviously it's more effective. Is it, is it better from a, a palliative care point of view? Are, are, the, are, the, are, the, are the women involved? Is it, a, is it an easier machine on them? or? Well, well, yes, but the quicker you diagnose anything, the quicker you can deal with it. And that's the other thing that we really wanted for. Um, and, and I think that what is so great about this breast centre, it, the Royal Hospital of Women, is I said it, it doesn't really service New South Wales. So people say, well, why would you go all the way to Western Australia to do this? It's because a lot of people in Western Australia go to the Royal Hospital for Women. Sure. Because we are renowned for our doctors and our equipment. And, and we've got lovely wineries. And also it's a twofold thing too, Jason, as a big compliment to Western Australians. We've got a whole load of Eastern staters. Uh, on these bus going, and they choose to come and explore this divine state and the yep. a gorgeous region yeah. of, of Margaret River. So, yeah, well, when I came over here at Christmas time, and I actually fell in love with the area, and then I uh, had the opportunity to go down to Margaret River and stay at Bunker Bay, which is where we're going, which is beautiful. And, uh, and then visiting the wineries, I mean, they were all just so wonderful. And we had this limousine company, All Star Limousine, that drove us around and gave us all this wonderful treatment. And I was just holidaying. And we've done these travel events before. And in fact, I've actually, my beautiful friends helped me with so much of my charity work. And Corny and Jude have always been very supportive of what I do. But I've done these travel events before and they really take off. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be a dream to go to the Margaret? Wouldn't it be a dream to go to Western Australia? It's great that you can combine a good cause with a fantastic part of the world. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, look, hopefully we'll get some, uh, get some good shots and some good footage and help promote WA in the process as well. It's up to you. Well, this is, this is, this is, this is true. <laughs> You're put, the one who's doing that. Put the pressure on. So down the end, Cornelia Francis or yes. uh, more Ag Bellingham is more... Uh, I'm the weakest, but yeah, OK. And yeah, we, we won't get you to say... <laughs> just just Corny. Goodbye. <laughs> Corny, Corny. <laughs> so, uh, I'll say that later. So not directly involved with the, uh, the Royal Hospital for Women, but uh, what, just, just come along because of the, the no, bit of fun I'm, to be with? Paul is kind enough to ask um, me to a lot of functions and charity 
work which I enjoy doing, and especially the women's, the Royal Women's Hospital. Corny's um, done a lot <coughs> for, the, for the hospital. Mm. It's, it's one in three women, I don't know if a lot of people know that, who actually get breast cancer. Is that right? That mm. one, one in three. three. Yeah. And that is an amazing, when you think of all the women in this country, and uh, everywhere else as well, but especially in Australia, it's one in three. So um, take care of yourselves and go and get yourselves checked because it's very important. Now, how regularly? Really. What's what's the current uh, the, the current verdict on how regularly uh, women should go and get a mammogram or, or get uh, you should get do it yearly. Yeah, yeah, every certainly year. at my age, I, I do, I do yeah, yearly. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, something they say every two years, but in fact, yearly is and and to get a pap smear and everything else is a yearly regular thing you should do. Okay. And as you pointed out before, Paula, it's uh, the early detection, getting, in, getting onto it nice and early, obviously. You, uh, how, about, how much of a difference does it make? Say for argument's sake, um, someone decides that look, they're a bit scared of going to see the doctor, they don't want to hear any bad news, so they don't go for five years. How much of a difference is that going to make in the potential of well, recovery? Enormous. A deadly difference. Uh, a a difference between life and death, yes. Literally, mm. yeah. And, um, and, and as what Corny said, one in three women, I mean, you're only amongst all of us that, that have got that risk. So, yeah, go in there when, when it's early. Yeah, definitely. Get it checked out early. But the, the, the great thing about this, I think, too, is that to do something exciting, I mean, we all have balls and we all have functions and doing that. But to be able to travel and to promote Western Australia, which we're all really proud to do, and to be amongst friends. I mean, these are two of my greatest friends, apart from anything else in my life. Because a, a lot of people might not know that, or might not remember, you were actually on Home and Away as well. I was. I you was were Judy's Danny sister. Mom, she was my little sister. S it was her sister. And so you're Judy's but, husband's sister? Yes. So but, you're, you're basically related. I know. Yeah, we're all related and, on Home and Away. <laughs> and um, I've, have I got a story for you about Home and Away that's going to come up next year? It's unbelievable. Um, yes. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> oh. God, it's un yes. Um, we've got a new story, Lana, but um, it's a bit far fetched. But we have to live with it. So, you and uh, I are used to far fetched, aren't we? I mean, you were talking to an imaginary Elsa at some stage during Home and Away, and you were talking back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you came out of the fridge. Raymar and myself and Norman Coben and Corny Francis <laughs> involved in this ridiculous storyline. And I remember absolutely, I could not control ghost. myself when I watched Corny having this in-depth conversation with this empty chair, you know? Um, <laughs> and how are you, so actually? Funny. Um, so funny. Well, you're exactly. looking well. well what, uh, I, what I think is particularly great is obviously utilising uh, your, your fame and your success over the years. Now, Paula, you've raised in the vicinity of $8 million for charity now, and you're a fantastic yeah. ambassador, but obviously a lot of people wouldn't be aware of the work you guys do, and I think it's great that not only are you uh, coming over to WA and enjoying yourselves, but raising best part of $100,000, maybe more, for, for uh, the Royal Hospital for Women, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. People out there who want to get involved, of course, you can ring in and donate some money and things and help out with the cause as well. But congratulations, not only on a, a great cause, but from being great people as well. And the one thing I keep reading over and over again when I was doing all my little research was how wonderful all three of you are. And I'm glad and proud to have had the chance to meet you uh, in a social circumstance. And thanks for coming on Wake Up WA. Um, oh, do WA need a number to ring? If they'd like Give to them a number to ring. So. 02 9382 if you go to wakeupwa.com later in the day, that information will be up there. There'll be a little bit of a link. You can get on uh, board with the Royal Hospital for Women. We're at the end of the show. They're starting to roll us. They're kicking us out of here. Ladies, thanks so much for coming along. Enjoy your time down Margaret River. You're going to have a great time. And thank you for being time. so thank thank you supportive you as well. I mean, following us around, you'll get lots of footage, guys. Pebble boots. <gasps> Ring up. Donate oh, the money. We'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early. Thanks for being with us on Wake Up WA. Thank you, ladies. Well done. <laughs>